Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Cars and Coffee. And uh, if you're a car guy uh, and like performance, you're in the right place. We've got some, some interesting topics today. Uh, I might point out that what I talk about comes from the Speed Therapy Society group. Uh, so if you're not a member, you know, please join. It's a, a great group of like-minded people with performance. And all the questions that I talk, I talk about come from that group. Uh, or you can send in questions live. I mean, that's so uh, I'll try to answer any questions you send in live. I'll try to answer. Uh, but I'm Kenny Brown. And for the next hour or so, I'm going to try to share my 40 plus years of experience in professional motorsports and building just top of the line uh, performance cars and championship winning race cars. And uh, today's subjects, it's kind of it, it, it kind of changed a little bit during the week as I was preparing. Where we're going to talk about the IRS and the Cobra. Uh, I kind of shifted what, what I'm going to talk about, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, we're uh, let's see, we've got something to show you. We've got our new first production run of our new jacking rails for the S550 Mustang, which are kind of unique. Uh, and we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, I, we're going to do IRS. We're going to talk about that later, and it's going to be kind of cool what I, what I decided to come up with. So, uh, Carrie said we're going to have, we should have a few new people with us today. So, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, you know, I've been around for a really long time building cars and winning national championships at the professional level. And uh, I like sharing my knowledge. I mean, I can't take it with me. So, I like sharing my knowledge. And we have cars and coffee on Saturday mornings. And then we've got the Speed Therapy Society, which is like minded people. And then any, anything that I talk about that we post is posted into the Speed Therapy Society into the uh, resource section. And then we also have the Speed Therapy Academy, which is uh, turning out to be a, a really cool deal, too. So that's, uh, you know, everybody knows me, my notes. Carrie gives me my notes, and I'd be lost without them. Uh, and I always screw it up anyway. So at least I have some, something to work from. Uh, let's see, uh, going, uh, with, uh, yeah, I'm going through it. Uh, okay, cars and coffee. Oh, every week at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern and uh, on Facebook Live and then also on Kenny Brown YouTube, YouTube channel. And uh, uh, some of the things that we've talked about in the past, like last week, we talked about reducing uh, wheel hop and IRS, also how and when to measure ride height, and then uh, uh, cold air kits. Uh, this week, uh, page we're going to start with it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool the way this worked out because you know two questions came from the uh from the society and uh i kind of come combining them into both and they're going to feed into the whole irs uh story but i think uh, oh i've got uh this week's art from uh yeah, let's see yeah this this week's uh, artwork from uh, my collection of motorsports art is called Formation Finish Le Mans 1966. It's another piece by uh, Nicholas Watts. I've got uh, quite a few of his, his works and uh, it's pretty cool. Even though Le Mans was just a few weeks back, uh, it's, it's uh, one of my great pictures. So the picture for the month is uh, Formation Finish and that's what they did in 66. They got all the uh, GT40s lined up uh, for the end. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a cool picture. Okay. And there's me, and there's my trusty toolbox of 40 plus years. It's been the like every major racetrack in North America. So, the, getting to the questions for this week, uh, Jim Hull asked, "What's faster, a Kenny Brown CSR OT Cobra or a Kenny Brown GT4 RS?" Uh, well, the short answer is the RS, but we're going to get to why. And then Jeff answered, asked a question that, that kind of feeds right into it. He said, which is heavier, the SN95 Cobra or the S197 Mustang? So I, I started on a path with that. And uh, I put together uh, kind of a quick chart. And Carrie will share it with us in a minute. But what I did is I went through SN95, 197, and 550s and put the models, the weight, and the power to come up with a power to weight ratio. And uh, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't testify. This is all 100% accurate information. I got it from different sources, so it, but it should be close. You know, the weight and horsepower should be close. And if, and if uh, Carrie, you can pop that up. We'll keep talking. Okay, Carrie says keep talking. She's not ready to pop it up yet. Uh, 
Anyway, going down, so the first, what was the, the CSROT? The CSROT uh, was a car I built back in 2003 uh, for Jeff Victor, Victor Ford in uh, Wakanda, Illinois. Uh, so he could run at uh, Audubon. And it was a 2003 uh, Cobra CSR, I mean, Cobra, 2003 Cobra supercharged, and we turned it into a CSROT. And that was going to be the, the subject because what I did back then, I wrote a whole great big article on builder's notes on uh, how and why I built the car and everything that went into it and why it worked so well. But as I was putting this together, I thought, you know, there's that's not that's not the fastest uh, IRS Cobra that it did. Uh, the fastest one was Kermi, my 2001 SEMA car. Uh, it was and it was brilliantly fast and just amazing to drive. And we'll get to that in a second if Carrie can come up for the sharing. More technical difficulties. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll run I'll run down the numbers. And on power to weight, what you're looking for the lower the power to weight, the quicker the car, because the lower the no number, uh, the, the number is how many, how much uh, weight one horsepower has to push. So if it's a low number, the car is going to be quicker. So just going down the SN95s, the uh, SV2001 SVT Cobra, weight uh, 3430, 320 horsepower. So it's got a power to weight of about 10.7. Now, the CSROT that we built, uh, that was uh, 3665 pounds and 390 horse, which is a power to weight of 9.4. Uh, we also threw in there Cobra R's because we did a lot of Cobra R's. And I think I thought saw Joe here this morning. He had one of them. Uh, in the end of one season, I can't remember which one it was. But after the last uh, driving event at, at Putnam, uh, we had five Cobra R's, uh, 2,000 Cobra R's in our shop, all to be upgraded uh, with all my suspension stuff. And uh, uh, they, they were just amazing cars when I got done. And like I said, I saw Joe here. He had, he had one of those, and he wished he had it back. So the Cobra R was 30, 3589, uh, 385 horsepower, power to weight 9.3. Now, now Kermy, you got it? Ta-da! Okay, can you, can you make it bigger? Gives me a chance to have some coffee. This is cars and coffee. So there's the cars and here's the coffee. There we go. Okay, that's better. I'm going to run it. Also, uh, just as an FYI, we're going to uh, put this chart uh, into the resource section. Uh, speed therapy society so if you'd like to print it off yourself it's going to be there or as a reference point so where I left off was after the cobra r at 9.3 was uh, uh kermy my csr it was uh, 33 50, 385 horsepower and 8.7 power to weight and that car was brilliantly fast it was just amazing to drive i could put it anywhere on the track and so after I did this and thought about that, I thought, you know, I should include Kermy in uh, in in talking about the uh, uh, building the ultimate uh, uh, IRS Cobra. So what I'm doing is the builder's notes that I had for the CSROT. I'm going to rewrite uh, and we're going to change it so that I include uh, some of the other, like the uh, huh? Uh, no, I, I can talk. They can look at that. Uh, I'm going to include the the, the uh, Cobra R's and Kermy into sort of a, a expanded builder's notes. And what I said earlier, we were planning to do kind of like a, a, a little mini workshop for the CSR Cobra this week. But after doing this, I thought, you know, uh, I've got a lot more information that I can squeeze in in just a half an hour or so. So what we're going to do, yeah, you can put me back on so I can talk to people. And does it work? Ah, I'm back. Okay, here's what I decided to do. Uh, I'm going to do uh, just a specific workshop for building the Ultimate Cobra. And it's not going to be on like, like Facebook like we do this. And I did, don't want to do it in Cars and Coffee because there's too much information. So what I decided to do is we're going to have like a workshop in, on Wednesday evening uh, on Zoom, which is a lot more personal. People can interact. And the reason I'm doing that is with the Speed Therapy uh, Academy. Uh, 
every other Wednesday is uh, uh, what we call a master class where we'll have guest speakers come in and speak for a half hour and then answer questions. So I'm going to do this on a Wednesday evening, just like it were a master class in Speed Therapy Academy. And I said it's going to be on Zoom so people can interact pretty, pretty easily. And the date is Wednesday, the 14th of October. So and there's going to be a place to sign up, I think, to register. And what will happen is we get close to it. You'll get an email with the uh, with the with the little link thing. So you link into Zoom. Um, so I, I thought that'd be a lot better. I can spend more time talking about it. Plus, it'll be just just like one of our speed therapy academy classes where people are on Zoom. So you'll be able to ask me questions as we go along. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I think it's going to be a lot better than just just a little half hour session uh, talking about the uh, the IRS Cobras. Because I mean, I built some great Cobras. I mean, I, I still think they're they're one of my favorite cars, and we still support ninety nine to 04 Cobras with with suspension. Uh, because yeah, you know, we've got we kind of, I, I think we've got the best. So anyway, going down, I mean, Kermie was uh, eight point seven power to weight, but it's not just the power to weight; it's how just how well the car worked. I mean, it just worked really well. But moving into the S one ninety sevens, can we put our chart back up? Let's see how this works again. Uh, I guess I can, I need to sip some coffee. Well, I need to maybe I kind of like wave off to the side when I want the chart put up. It's missing again. Okay, I'll read it off of mine. S197 Mustangs, a 2005 GT, 3614 on weight, 300 horsepower, a power to weight ratio of 12 to 1. Uh, 11 GT, like with, with the Coyote motor, they're like 3705, 412 horsepower, and that's the power to weight of 9 to 1. Now the Boss, uh, 3483, 444 horsepower, that gives you a power to weight of seven seven point eight, which is why the, the boss cars are so fast. Now, two thousand ten GT five hundred is thirty nine eighteen in weight and five hundred and forty horsepower. So that's seven point three power to weight. Here we go. Oh, it's back. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. There's a great big thing in the bottom. Okay, it's just blinking back and forth. Time to sip coffee. Everybody, everybody take a sip of coffee. Oh, Won't you just drop it off? I'll keep talking. Anyway, the, going down the, uh, I see that we got the boss and the, the uh, Shelby GT500 was uh, 30, 3918, 540, so 7.3 power to weight. Uh, the 13 uh, Shelby GT500 was 3817, uh, 662. So that's got a power to weight of 5.8, which is theoretically really fast, at least go. really fast in a straight line. Ah, here we go. Okay. Uh, but then we had Ruby, another one of my favorite cars, my 2012 uh, GT4 RS. Uh, which was about 3,700 pounds. Uh, it had the uh, had a uh, Coyote uh, Boss motor in it, 510 horsepower and 7.3 power to weight. And that car was really really quick. And it was you could yeah you know, again another car that you could put anywhere. It had amazing speed, amazing brakes. Uh, it was you know, I, I chased down a lot of really uh, cars that uh, should be much faster than uh, than Ruby, uh, but you know it wasn't it wasn't a challenge. We had one video at uh, Road America, where I was carrying so much speed off of turn 14 for the straightaway, I had to back out of the throttle to keep from running into a Viper. And as soon as I got by, I ran past him and held him off all the way down the straightaway. And I think a lap or two later, I, I outbroke a GT3, a GT3 Porsche RS into turn five. So I mean, that, was, that was a really fast car. So at the power to weight ratio is only part of the equation. I mean, if power to weight is in a straight line, that, that's where you're going to see power to weight work, if you can get the power to the ground. Uh, so, that you know, the GT500 uh, with its uh, 5.8 power to weight ratio theoretically is really fast. However, with Ruby, my car with a 7.3 power to weight ratio, like it tracks like Road America, was much, much quicker. And the reason is with the, with the uh, AGS.4 suspension in the uh, in S197, uh, 
I mean, I get to the gas so much sooner. Uh, I mean, it's the, the car brakes later and rotates quicker and I get to the gas sooner. So I'm to the gas by the time I hit the apex, I'm, I'm full throttle. So I'm getting a big launch off the corner. And uh, that's that's what you get, you get. The faster you get off the corner, the faster you're going to be in the straightaway. And I would pass uh, GT500s all the time on, on the straight between turn three and turn five at Road America. Just because I'm getting the power down, I'm carrying a lot of mid-corner speed, a lot of exit speed. And the, with all the power and torque that they have, well, first of all, they got a lot extra weight in the front, which makes them just a little more sluggish to turn and a, a little harder to break compared to compared to uh, like a Ruby. And they're they have to wait, wait, wait to get to the throttle because if they put the gas down, they're going to spin the rear tire as well. And I'm full throttle <clears throat> before I <clears throat> get off the corner. So power to weight is only part of the equation. I mean, you've got to have the the platform underneath uh, to make it all work. Okay, so we can move in, in the 550 cars now. Uh, uh, 17 GT, 3,700 pounds, uh, 435 horsepower, eight, uh, 8.5 to 1, which is pretty good. Uh, and then a 19 uh, a GT with with the better motor is uh, with the, the again 3705, a 460 horsepower was 8 to 1. Uh, the G Shelby GT350. At 3750 and 526 is seven to one. But then we've got uh, Maryland, uh, my the, uh, the really, really cool uh, GT4 CSR that I built uh, for uh, uh, a customer down in Arizona. And that ended up being 30, about 3,600 pounds. We took some weight off of it and about 560 horsepower nicely aspirated for power to weight, six, 6.4. But again, that was only part of the equation. I mean, it was an amazing car to drive. I mean, it had it had everything. Uh, we had the, the big uh, six six piston uh, uh, cal calipers and fifteen inch rotors on the rear, and on the front we had the monster. I mean, the monster or mega brakes with the calipers fifteen inches tall. Uh, ZRZ double adjustable remote canisters. We had some arrow on it, um, carbon hood. I mean, it just. The car was just amazing to drive. Also, we had like forge line wheels and 305s on the front and 315s in the back. I mean, the car was just blazingly fast and just a ball to drive. So power to weight is only part of it. Uh, it's it's like you've got to get that power to the ground and you've got to be able to manage it. Uh, so that's why there's, you know, so getting back to the original question, uh, what was quicker, the CSR OT or the GT4 RS? GT4 RS hands down. And that was a much, much quicker car because, again, the CSR OT was supercharged, which meant it had a much heavier front end, uh, which makes it look not as, not, I, you can't break as, as deep as I could. And it's kind of sluggish around the corner. Uh, and then I'm off the corner faster. So I mean, just having a lot of power doesn't necessarily mean the car is going to be quick, which is I, I always I mean anybody that's with me with me for a while. We know I just push, push, push the performance platform. It, it's all about what's underneath the car first. I mean, the, the real speed comes from the platform. Not, I mean, that, certainly you need an engine, but I mean, the real speed, like I just say, I mean, I, I can I can blow past GT, GT 500s with a, with a GT just because I'm carrying more speed through the corner. So, I mean, the, the better question should have been which, which was faster, uh, Kermi, the uh, 2001 uh, CSR, or Ruby, the uh, GT4 RS. It's kind of like they would be pretty close uh, because, uh, I mean, Kermi was, you know, quite a bit lighter, uh, didn't have as much power. I mean, power to weight was a little bit more, 8.7 versus 7.3. But I mean, they would they would be pretty close as far as quickness. I think overall, especially on bigger tracks, Ruby with with a Coyote motor, uh, you know, would kind of rule the day. Even though it had a live axle, but again, uh, you know, our, our live axle cars work really really well. We've got the for those that haven't been with us, there's only three pieces to my S197 suspension: the rear grip kit, front grip kit, and the springs and shocks, and they work really really well. So that kind of answers. Uh, two questions at once. And again, this will be, this will be posted, this will be on the, uh, in Speed Therapy Society in the resources. So that you can, if you want, you can re reference it or print it off if you want. Uh, so, oh, here's another, another one, notes because 
At least he's not waving at me this time. Okay. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, if you're just joining us, I'm Kenny Brown. This is Cars and Coffee, and uh, we're spending about an hour here answering your questions and uh, talking about things you want to know about and uh, sharing my you know, super vast experience uh, of for the last 40 years of you know professional motorsports and building really cool cars. Uh, and also send your questions in. I mean, I'm, I'm well, more than happy to answer questions live uh, as they come in. I don't know if we've got any questions in yet. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to them in just a minute. Uh, I think what, what I want to do is we'll go through. I'm going to just kind of see. I, got, I, have to, I have to look at my notes. Everybody knows that has been with me for a while. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give a just kind just just a brief coffee time. Oh, I mean, we have a new product. Uh, we just did the first production run of uh, jacking rails for the S550 cars, uh, 17 and newer. And what we it took us a while because it, 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 there's it's kind of you looking underneath the car, uh, putting a jacking rail in. Now with all the previous cars, we've got a jacking rail for the Gen 1 Mustangs, uh, Fox, SN95, and S197. All those cars, we've got uh, horizontal and vertical surfaces that we can use to mount the jacking rails, which makes it really easy. Under the 550, no such thing exists. In fact, though, the one place that makes the most sense that you can use a bolt-in uh, jacking rail is at a five-degree angle. So if you just bolt uh, like a, a square piece of tube in there, it's going to be at an angle and not flush on the bottom. Now, a, a lot of people out there are doing they're either doing that where they just bolt at an angle or some are doing a uh, tube and then you know, welding just a flat piece on and an angle at the end. And, and I didn't like any of that. So we kind of put our heads together. And what we came up with is uh, rather than like steel tube, we have a fabricated uh, jacking rail. And fabricated, what I mean is we we take two, we uh, cut sheet out of a big sheet of metal. We cut the pieces and we form them. And what we end up with, can you see that? Here we go. Is we we build in the five degree angle right into the top, so it's going to sit flush on the bottom. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's completely different from anybody else. So say, like I say, it's fabricated. Start with a great big sheet of steel, laser cut it, and then form it. And then, ah, ah, here it is. <laughs> I kind of like. This is kind of what it looks like. I can't get it all in one shot. Huh. Right into the wall. Turn it this way. But anyway, you can really see the... Uh, there's a really good shot of how it's it's uh, it's not flush. It's a trapezoid. And uh, we're, we're pretty happy with it. Uh, we think it's going to work extremely well. Uh, I mean, it's certainly a lot tidier than, than anything else that's out there. So that just came out of production this week. Uh, they'll be, in, I think they're on our website now. Uh, so the first production run, I think it might almost be sold out, but I, I don't know. So if you've got a 550 one, really, really cool jacking rails, we've got them now. Okay. So this, this is the original builder's notes I did for the CSROT. And... Just to kind of give you a brief overview, and this is going to be expanded to include other, other, uh, other of my uh, uh, IRS Cobra cars. And even if you don't have a, an IRS Cobra, I think you probably learn a lot in the workshop, or I hope you learn a lot in the workshop. Even if you learn, learn a little in the workshop, it's still of good value. But what I start, I start talking about the CSR background, uh, and then I go into <laughs> anybody who's been with me knows I always it's always the power foundation. Uh, I mean, you got got to have a power foundation, performance foundation, uh, whichever you want to call it. And there's five secrets to my power foundation. Chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes. You get all of them right, and all of a sudden you got a car that really, really works. So what I do is I go through the uh, the performance foundation uh, for the, uh, for the uh, IRS Cobras, and I talk about the chassis. Uh, and then I talk about the, uh, the advanced AGS is uh, something I coined as my advanced geometry suspension systems. And for the uh, 
uh, SN95 for the uh, uh, regular live axle SN95s, that was AGS 3.0. Of course, the third generation. First generation was the 87 Celine championship Celine Mustangs that I uh, engineered and built and managed at four national championships. That was AGS 1.0. Uh, even though it's supposed to be shoulder stack racing, trust me, we, we had different geometry than anything else. But you couldn't tell. It was some sometime I'll tell you the secret to that. Uh, so that was that was Gen One, and then two, we added uh, like the uh, fixed strut, uh, and then in Gen Three, we added uh, came out with the uh, tubular K member in the front with AGS geometry, and then three point five was the with the uh, the IRS. So what we're going to be talking about is advanced geometry suspension Gen three point five. And I'll talk a little bit about how it all came about. Oh, I got a couple of pages on that. And then I'll, I'll, I'll break down the suspension parts, why they do it, what they do, why they do, and why I chose to do it that way. And with the, the cars that I build, uh, it's like if I can't find what I'm looking for in the marketplace, I'll just build it. I mean, that you know goes back to my years and years of motorsports. I mean, you just you need something, just build it. So I just kind of carry that forward and I talk about how and why I do things. I mean, it's, I, I don't do anything just I don't build anything that just is cool and pretty and and just replaces a factory piece. Every, everything that I design and build has has a function and improves something in the geometry. So I'll go through the whole the front suspension, rear suspension and then brake packages. Brake packages have changed since uh, we, I first did this. So we'll talk about brakes. And then wheels and tires. Uh, uh, this is almost like a mini version of the uh, Speed Therapy Academy. Uh, we'll talk about some wheels and tires. Uh, and then part of the performance foundation is like the, the differential. Uh, and the back of the car, let's see, cooling. We'll go through cooling. Uh, cooling is important. The, I mean, the, the more power you make, the faster you go, the more heat you generate. And the more heat you generate, uh, the more heat you got to get rid of. Uh, otherwise, you know, bad things happen. So we'll talk about heat management and cooling uh, all the way down to like brake ducts. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the thing about brakes and uh, we'll talk about brake pads too, because people don't realize what brake pads are is brake pad is an energy conversion uh, implement because uh, a Mustang going down a track 120 miles an hour, that's kinetic energy moving at a pretty good clip. Uh, and the only way to, well, there's a couple of ways to, you know, just to slow or stop the car, you know, tree, wall, guardrail. Those aren't really the preferred method. The well, preferred method is using your brakes. And what your brakes do is they take the kinetic energy of that mass, that 36, 8, 3,800 pound mass, run down straight away, and they convert it to heat energy. Uh, and that's why brake pads are so important. Uh, so you got to be able to get the right pads. And so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about cooling. Uh, a little bit about the interior. You know, what, what I do in the interior as far as seats and harnesses. Uh, let's see. And then uh, the cars that I build are, are all serialized. And uh, there's a, it's kind of interesting. There's, there's probably, there's over like 500 serialized Kenny Brown Mustangs out there. And just recently, all of a sudden, there's uh, we've seen a lot of uh, Fox Mustangs popping up, yeah. Kenny Brown Fox Mustangs, uh, people calling to get information. So we have to go in the archives and dig up the, the serial, serial number and give them information, which is really kind of cool. I mean, I love seeing these old cars uh, come back to life. And we even, uh, you know, speaking of old cars coming back to life, uh, a friend of mine over in Ohio managed to, he now owns both of the 86 Celine Mustangs that I built, uh, which kind of started the whole big Celine career thing uh, with the one that won the 24 hours, of Can the backup car won the 24 hours of Canada. And then he now he was able to get the, uh, the, the body, I think number, number, maybe number nine, and he's rebuilding that. So that's going to be pretty cool. So that's kind of what we're going to go through. It's going to be like a, a real condensed mini version of the Speed Therapy Academy where we really dive into in each individual subject. And uh, like, like I say, I thought Wednesday evening uh, would be much better than trying to squeeze that in on, on a Saturday in uh, Cars and Coffee. Uh, have I missed anything? 
people like what they're hearing, if they can like, hit the like oh, button. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I always forget something. Please hit the like button on Facebook yeah. or, or on YouTube. Do you want me to go through it? Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, if you like what, what Kenny's sharing, if you can please uh, uh, click the like button on Facebook. And if you're on uh, uh, YouTube, do the same. We're live, uh, simulcasting live on both YouTube and Facebook. If you... Uh, can't catch it live you can always catch all the episodes on youtube the kenny brown performance youtube channel and uh, we have we're down to we're at 29 episodes now yeah who'd have believed that you know we did this it's kind of started with i did two series i just kind of did you know answer a few questions and this has kind of like grown into uh, a whole series if you wish so well she's relocating the uh, control panel up to here so i can hear hear the questions okay so what we have, um, this one I believe is coming from, you can find it, um, from YouTube. Uh, Jonathan Manitooth, let me know if you're coming from YouTube because I could not find your question on Facebook. He is asking recommended tire uh, pressure for front and front and back for street driving. Uh, I mean, the, the recommended tire pressure is, you know, look, in, well, it, it, look inside the door panel. I mean, that's the best way to do it. The, you look inside the door panel, it's going to give you the recommended tire pressures for the street. Uh, certainly tire pressures for the track are a lot different. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the best way to do it because every manufacturer is going to have different recommended tire pressures. And then if you've uh, seen, if you really want to get technical, really get them tiled in, uh, I, I wrote, there's a the article I wrote um, a few years back that's that's still pretty popular on uh, in uh, Turnology on the uh, tire temperatures, taking tire temperatures for the track, and you can actually even do that for the street. I mean, you can run around on the street and then do a quick tire temperature check, and you can tell how your pressures are, if they're good or bad. So we should, we'll probably we'll put up the link to the tire to the tire temperature. Um, yeah, and it's also in the Speed Therapy Society. So join the Speed Therapy Society okay. Facebook page. Yeah, Speed Therapy Society Facebook Facebook page. It's an actual group. Group. Uh, I'm the car guy. Okay. Can you tell that? <laughs> okay. Ready for your next yep. one? Yep. Uh, Jim Flattery with a non dented hood. Will removing the hood insulation help with engine cooling? He has a GT500. Yeah. Will removing the insulation help with engine cooling? Uh, you know, I, I would say probably not. Uh, what it would do is it put more heat into the hood. Uh, maybe that would help with the cooling, but the hood will get pretty hot. Uh, you really, you really need to get, you need to have a vetted hood. What, what kind of car is it? Uh, GT500. GT500. You, know, you know, Jim. No, oh, yeah. Uh, what year is it? Uh, I think it's a uh, 13, 14, something like 12. It's after 10. Okay. I think all the GT500s have some little vents in them. Uh, my recommendation is make them bigger. Make sure they're open and make, make the vents bigger. Um, if, if, you know, if you don't want to invest in a, like a, a vented, uh, uh, fiber less or carbon hood, but you know, if taking the insulation off, and uh, well, it's a tough question because it's going to, the thermal qualities are going to migrate into the hood. The hood will get hotter. So I guess in some sense, uh, yeah, it would help with the temperature, but not in a big way. Vents, hood vents are the only real solution. We have some hood vents. If we, need them, I think. we have some hood vents? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, if you you say we don't, then we don't. Well, I mean, are you talking about like the vents we put on on George's car? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I know what you're talking about. We we have access to uh, some carbon vents. Uh, they're they're pretty nice when we can get them. I mean, there there are certain times of year we can't get them because they're so popular. But what we did on uh, on uh, George's uh, uh, 2001 uh, okay. Cobra. That's that's a CSR. <laughs> it's a wicked fast car. Uh, he had he had a uh, like a the GT500 hood with the, had the little the two little swoop swoops in it. What we did is we cut those out and we put the fiberglass or the carbon vents in there and turned it into a, a vented hood, which is really cool. That car's for sale, by the way. Uh, if anybody wants an amazing uh, SN95 Cobra, uh, this is it. And Brown. and it's a it's a Kenny Brown it's serialized. It went through two. We built it in maybe 04 or five, and then we went through it again in ten. Uh, he put a 
big motor in it. I mean, it's like a 5.0 or 5.2, all the good stuff, supercharged, like 700 horsepower. And it's got full suspension arrow. I mean, it's a, I would say he's got well over 80, $90,000 invested in the car. And uh, he wants, he wants me to build him a new uh, S550 track car because he decided that he's to the point where uh, he doesn't want a trailer anymore. He just wants to drive the track and, and drive back. Uh, but the problem is, his wife said if he brings another Mustang home uh, without getting rid of one of the cars he has, he will be sleeping in it. So we're trying to help him sell it. It's, uh, yeah, he's, asking, he's asking like 35 grand for it. The, the engine almost cost that much. So if anybody knows anybody would be interested in a really, really, really nice uh, 2001, a brilliantly fast uh, Candy Brown Cobra, let us know. We'll get some information to you. Maybe, maybe we just put some information in society. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, because it's a cool car. Uh, okay. okay ready? Also, you can see the hood vents that I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When the uh, power to weight is great for drag racing and straight acceleration, what about weight for cornering and braking? Is that a big subject? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, weight for cornering and braking. Okay, weight, uh, you know, in a race car or a track car, you know, weight is your en en enemy. Uh, the more weight you have, the more energy it takes to push that weight. Uh, and you've only got so much energy, the more weight you get, the slower you're going to be. So weight is really important in, uh, in two specific areas. First is braking. Uh, like the, like a, uh, let's just say S197, like a Boss Mustang versus a GT500. Because there's so much extra, you look at the, the weight of the cars, there's so much extra front weight in the GT500 versus the Boss that when it comes to braking, you got more mass to slow down and it's going to make the nose dive. But we, we kind of fixed that with our front grip kit. We put a lot of anodized in it so it doesn't dive so much and anti lift in the back so it doesn't raise up. But even so, with less weight on the nose, it, the, uh, the GT is going to brake a lot later. And also, as far as rotating the car, getting around the corner, in, if, if both cars had the, our, our Gen 4 suspension, the GT would still be quicker in rotation because it doesn't have as much weight on the nose. GT500 would be just a little bit more sluggish to get the rotation around. Uh, uh, so, and then getting off the corner, obviously, the lighter car is going to get off the corner quicker. Uh, because it's not going to spin the wheels because of torque. So yeah, weight weight is weight is a big deal uh, in 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 track cars and motorsports. And you know, Mustangs are they're front they're front end heavy, uh, which always is a challenge. I mean, they're theoretically they're drag race cars, uh, big motor in the front, live axle in the back. Uh, straight line speed is their strength, which is when I, when I did the the uh, AGS 4.0 for for the 197s. I specifically engineered them around the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you know, strength is straight line speed. I mean, they're a drag race car, <laughs> straight line. So the first part of that is with the, the anti-dive we put in the front, the anti lift in the back, uh, the cars will break much, much later uh, than a normal normal car, like a lot later. And but by being able to break two, three, four car lengths later, you just made that straightaway longer. And with the geometry I have in the front, I mean, you turn the wheel and the car just turned. Uh, I think Wendy made a comment a couple of weeks back that she's got both front and rear, and, and it's like her car pivots, uh, which is, you know, it, you've driven just a stock Mustang around the corner. They don't do that. So by getting this rotate quick, uh, and then you can get back to the power sooner because, you know, the roll center is front rolls are up, rear rolls are down. You can get back to the power sooner. You don't have to wait as long for the axle to settle. So coming off the corner, you're getting, you're getting the gas sooner, so you're actually making the next straightaway longer. So by late braking, I made the first straightaway longer. By quick rotation, I made the corner shorter. And then by getting back to the gas sooner, I made the, the next straightaway longer. So, I mean, that, that's the problem with the Mustang. And that, that's kind of how I, I approach the, the geometry the, for the S197. Uh, but weight is a big thing. I mean, you take weight off. Uh, you know, that, that's why, like, carbon hoods are such a good thing on a Mustang. They take not only take weight off, they take weight off high. Uh, you know, and weight high is, you know, we think about thinking tipping over and taking out weight high is a good thing. So, okay, we have some more uh, power to weight questions. First of all, Dave Robinson uh, shared that he has his 2014 V6, 3,500 pounds, 307 horsepower. It comes out to 11.4. Is that correct? But, well, I don't have my calculator. Okay. But, yeah, <laughs> you, you, just, you just divide the horsepower yeah. into the weight. Yeah, that's not too bad. 
And Chris Melitu has a couple of questions. Um, his is, are you calculating the rear uh, horsepower or engine horsepower? That's a good question. So it's en engine horsepower. Okay. And just a note for Chris, mm -hmm. uh, the patent has been filed. <laughs> In production, and we're 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 starting to do the first production run. So, uh, Chris will know what that means, and you all know what it means in a couple of weeks. Um, and then Chris also has a question. So he's calculating his horsepower, and uh, so I think you should explain how to calculate that power to weight ratio. He says my Shelby's thirty eight hundred with seven hundred sixty three. Would that be five then? If that divides out, yeah, yeah you just five, divide yeah. the power into the yeah, weight. That's really good. Yeah, well, his his car is really really fast. Yeah, and he's got a full suspension, and he's getting an update <laughs> in in uh, in the next month or so. Yeah, so uh, that was his question. So again, if you can explain how you figure the power to weight. That yeah, it's just the uh, horse the horsepower in the, in the weight because what you're looking at is uh, how much how much uh, horsepower does it take to push one pound or. How, how much horsepower is pushing how much weight of the car? Okay, uh, Wendy says to stop teasing her. <laughs> stop teasing everybody with your thing. Okay, uh, also Wendy has another question. What is good to take out high? What is good to take out high to reduce weight? What is good to take out to reduce weight on your car? Uh, I mean, you know, the hood is one, is one thing. It, high the wood is is high and heavy. You know, Mustang hoods are big and they weigh a lot. I mean, that's and it takes maybe 20, 30 pounds uh, off high in the car. Uh, aside from that, I mean, you just have to start, depending if it's a street car, track car, you just have to start looking at, you know, what's above the belt line that you don't need and you can throw it out. But uh, the, the hood and the rear deck lid, too, are, are both things you can take off weight. But in a Mustang, you're, if you make the rear lighter, you want to make the front lighter, not the rear lighter. So, and then uh, James Dumas, Donas, sorry about that. I'm still probably butchering your name. James has a question. Okay, James is good. Yeah. Adding to Wendy's question about weight, good to move the battery to the rear? Actually, yes. That's a really good question. And that's the subject that will come up in, in talking about our the Cobras. On all our serious track cars, we move the battery to the right rear and low. And the reason for that is when we scale cars, the right rear of the Mustang is always the lightest part of the car. So moving the, the battery to the to the back is always a good thing. Uh, and then you want to use, you want to, I can't remember what the gauge is, but you want to use the smallest gauge uh, battery cables uh, that, that there is. And you, you don't want to run two cables. You only want to run one, the positive cable from the back of the car to the front, and you want the negative to be grounded in the back. And the reason for that is the cable weighs a lot. And I can't remember what the gauges is, but the couple of different sizes. Uh, and you don't need you, know, you don't need a super big one because that's extra weight. So okay, uh, if anybody has any other questions, uh, feel free to add them. And let's see we have uh, he also has the oh, is a, a tiger racing hood carbon or fiberglass? Okay, the tiger hoods. And it's kind of story behind those. Uh, the Tiger Hoods were actually developed by my late son, Paul. Uh, he developed it on the uh, SN95 cars, and he carried it over to the uh, S197s. And the story behind that is that Ford Racing was testing, uh, it, I think it was a Groton, a prototype for the, the Boss, the Boss S, the 302 Boss S. And uh, Paul showed up with one of his hoods. And they did a, just a back-to-back -back test. All they did in the car is they just put the hood on, the, the bended hood. It was carbon. And uh, the car picked up as, as, as big. It was like one or two seconds lap time. And the reason for that, car, vented hoods do two really important things. First of all, they let that heat out the top. Uh, if you don't have a vented hood, you get all that heat in the engine compartment, and it's going to go down, down and out. Uh, as because you got it coming through the radiator into the engine compartment, it's hot, it goes down and out. Part of the problem with that is as it goes down, you're actually building pressure under the nose of the car. Now, when you have a vented hood, a lot of that goes in, goes out the top, which means if it's going out the top, you're reducing pressure under the nose, 
It just makes the car turn better. I mean, you have much better front grip. So that's that's how the Tiger Hood came into be on the Boss S and so popular with everything else. Also, uh, he was the very instrumental in development of the G-Stream Wing that I think is out of production now. Mm. But that that was a great product. So I got lost. What was the original question? <laughs> um, uh, we were talking about the Tiger. Um, is it carbon oh, okay. or fiberglass? Okay. It's, it, they had both carbon and fiberglass. Uh, after he passed away, his... Uh, his wife kind of got weird uh, about the whole tiger thing. And then she passed away a few years later. And uh, so that whole thing got shut down, but uh, we have some friends that are actually building similar hoods uh, to the, uh, to the tiger. I mean, it's, it's like uh, not exact, but pretty darn close. So I mean, we can, we can still get them if anybody's interested, but I think they do both carbon and fiberglass. Either, either one's going to be lighter than the factory hood. Okay, we're going to get back on batteries now. Chris uh, said he he changes battery, and his older one is 36 pounds, and this one is 9. Yeah, yeah Chris yeah. told me about that. He got like this super-duper, super lightweight battery. He went from 30, 36 pounds to 9-pound battery. He didn't tell me how much it cost. I, I can just imagine okay. what it cost. And anti, uh, it's anti-gravity battery. It's anti-gravity battery. I guess that means it maybe floats on its own in the back of the car. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I'm sure that just cost a bundle. And uh, Del Hughes said that he I went to a small dry uh, cell battery and it only weighs eight pounds. Chris, you're a pound over. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it looks like Del Del is the uh, is is the weight champion on batteries. Let me see. Yeah, and if you go to a small battery, just be sure it's got enough cold cranking power uh, to to start your engine either when it's cold or when it's hot. Uh, sometimes starting engines when they're hot is almost more challenged than starting them when it's cold. Okay, Wendy has an interesting comment on the hoods. She said she this past weekend she was at uh, Dominion, and she had a friend in a WRX that had a dented hood, and he said he could actually feel the car generating more downforce. <laughs> yeah, and and that yeah that's 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 it. I mean, you, you, that that you know just imagine all that air rushing through the radiator. And it's, it's going into the engine part of it. It's kind of getting all bunched up. It's like, okay, what are we doing in here? And they got to sneak at the bottom or a thing go in there and just go right at the top. I mean, then you're not put, building up that pressure on the nose. Uh, if you got enough vents, you can almost turn into negative pressure, which holds the nose down. So, yeah, I mean, vented hoods are, are great. I, you know, we put them on just about everything. Okay. And uh, we're going to, Pass a few notes now, and if anybody has any other questions, this is the time to get them out. Um, otherwise, we are going to talk about the Cobra workshop that's coming up. Um, if you want to, do you want to mention it again, or what? Okay. Or do you want me to? The, my my director producer, uh, Hammer says I should mention the workshop again. Okay, the workshop I, I was going to do kind of like a an IRS thing today, but in, in, in going through the questions that we got through the society, which I answered earlier, it just made me think that, you know, there's, there's more to it than my original. What I was originally going to do is just go through the builder notes for the CSROT. But, I mean, as I said, there's a lot more to it than that. And I wanted to throw in some other cars like Kermi and, and the, and the uh, 2000 Cobra Rs. And I wanted to do it in a, a better format than, than th through Facebook on a Saturday morning. So we're going to, it's going to be, uh, it's called up a class for all practical mm -hmm. purposes on Wednesday evening, the 14th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on Zoom. And if you haven't, if you don't know what Zoom is, uh, you know, six months ago, I had no idea what Zoom is. Now it's kind of like we can't live without it. So it's going to be on Zoom. So it's going to be more personal. Everybody's going to be involved. So you have the register and the, I, I just put the registration link up. It's also going to be on our website. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, um, it will, you'll, you'll get a newsletter subscriber, um, uh, excuse me, newsletter on it. And of course, we'll probably put it on our Facebook and in the Speed Therapy Society. So wherever so, you go, so, you'll yeah, see it. You if you're a Cobra owner. And sorry. that what, when, what happens is you will get an email with a link, a Zoom link that you just kind of click on and, and boom, you're in the, you're in the uh, what they call it, uh, Zoom, the it's a, just a Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting. Zoom room. Zoom room. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You're in the Zoom room. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna do a little, little, you know, a little more. So, it's, like I say, it's this Wednesday night is usually where we have master class for the every other Wednesday. We have master class in the Speed Therapy Academy, 
and uh, the next week we're not having a master class so i guess i'm doing sort of a master class for uh, everybody on the on the irs covers and then and, the and also fox fox mustangs with irs in the back yeah and after he does a Cobra uh, class, we're going to be scheduling an S-197 class and an S-550 class. So probably maybe one a month, one every six weeks. So if you don't own a Cobra and have an S-197 or a S-550, stay tuned. Yeah. And in essence, what I mean, I'm going to go through. Uh, just turn the light off. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Clumsy feet. <laughs> what was I talking about? I don't remember, but we're going, we're dragging on too long yeah. on this. So anyway, uh, so join us. Oh, get... I know what I was talking about. And what it, what I'm doing is I, I go through the cars, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, and just how I build a great car. Uh, and I'm sure other people have different philosophy. Uh, you know, my philosophy I've developed over a lot of years of doing this. And uh, I explained the hows and whys and what, what I, you know, the end result is I want a great handling car. Cause I mean, the, the, to me, a car has to really drive. I mean, it has to really drive and really feel well. Uh, there, there's nothing that's, that's better, puts a bigger smile on my face than a, a car that really handles well on track. You know, it, it, it breaks hard and you're going around the corner, you really feel the car digging in, feel the G's in your butt. Uh, I mean, I just love that. So, I mean, that's why it's kind of like I build all, all the big cars I build, build for myself uh, because I love to drive cars. And uh, I explain the whole philosophy and the, the ins and outs, why I do things. Uh, so, that, I mean, if, if you like my philosophy, you can follow along and build your own really cool, killer car. And I think that is it. Oh, El Brian West said, do you have Academy people have? Do Academy people have to register? Yes, uh, Brian, the, the link is different than the Academy uh, Zoom link. So, yes, you would have to register. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah. Yeah, the Academy is a 12-week course, and we're in, what, week eight now? Yeah. And uh, I think we're – it's it's turning out we, – we did, I, did I did a workshop earlier that was really popular, Transforming Your Driving Experience. And from that, we developed the Speed Therapy Academy, which is a 12-week course. It's, it's, it's a paid course. Uh, but I really, I take every subject and we really drill down. And again, it's Zoom, so people are participating. It's like, just like we're in a classroom. So Carrie is talking about maybe doing another Transforming Your Driving Experience workshop in November. Uh, yeah, November. And then doing another academy starting after the first of the year. So. Uh, what will keep you tuned? It's uh, the people in the academy just are really enjoying it. You're giving a lot of valuable information. So anyway, I think you know you can do your little spiel if you can get if you guys can give us some likes, that would be helpful. Yeah, a little the, thumbs up. A thumbs up, and and uh, for people that are new, uh, we we had kind of a problem with Facebook. Uh, there's supposed to be little wrenches that float up along with the thumbs up, but it seems like they got hot, hot and melted, and they look like a heart. So they're, they're really not a heart. They're kind of like a heart-shaped wrench. So be sure to send up some wrenches for us, too. Oh, there they come. Do you see them? Oh, no, I can't see them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Okay, cool. So, okay, we're, we're actually going to wrap up on time yep. for, for a change. Uh, I have no idea what we're going to talk about next week. You have any ideas? If you any, have any, any ideas, would, would you like to talk about speed therapy, society, send in your questions. Tell me what you want to learn about because, again, what I, I talk about, what you guys want to know about. So as of right now, I have no subject for next week. Send me some ideas, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work that in. And uh, that's it. Uh, it's, uh, it's turning into a chilly time of the year here in Indianapolis. Go ahead. So is anyway, uh, I don't know where you guys are, but I think summer's over. Uh, so it's the time to start thinking about what we're going to do over the winter. We got a number of cars coming in. We're going to really do some cool late updates on Chris Malatu is one of them. Uh, and then uh, Cliff, I don't know if he's here today. Cliff's car is coming in. So we've got and we've got some we've got some. Probably in the next month, we're going to have an announcement. I mentioned that I told uh uh, Chris, that the patent's been filed, and he knows what that's all about. But uh, you, you guys will know in, in a few weeks when we get a little 
little start in the production. So with that, uh, have a good weekend, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. And remember to keep the shut. Keep the sunny. <laughs> okay, back up. Okay, remember to keep the shiny side up. There, got it out. So we'll go. Have a good weekend. We'll see you all next week.